Hello, uh, good morning everybody. Uh, so I am Daniel Connard from uh, CSTB. It's uh, the French Building Research I Institute. So I have been asked to give a, a short overview about super insulating uh, material. Uh, as it has been already mentioned, uh, energy saving in building is, is a huge challenge, and especially for retrofitting and where you need energy saving, but at the same time you need uh, space saving. So uh, the development of new uh, thin or slim insulating material is, is, uh, is, is an important uh, issue. Okay, for, uh, as an introduction, I will start from uh, traditional uh, insulating material and even more on uh, uh, thermal conductivity of building material. So in the graph, uh, I present the thermal conductivity versus the density, and you can see that uh, most of the building material, uh, so they have a, 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 something like a, a curve representing the thermal conductivity versus density. On the right, at the top, you have a concrete. If you go down, so the density will decrease, and you will meet uh, brick or uh, aerated cellular concrete and you will uh, reach the uh, insulating uh, domain uh, on, at, at, the, at the low uh, density, and you will notice that you have a, a minimum value because when you decrease the, ter the, the density, you remove solid part, and so you have a high porosity, and when you remove solid part uh, on the left, so at very low density, you have an increasing of the thermal conductivity due to radiation. Uh, you will notice also two uh, uh, group of uh, the pink and the red, uh, uh, which are uh, mainly uh, polyurethane foam with uh, uh, a gas which is not air, another gas than air. And so you, you, you will... Uh, leave the, the, the main curve. And you have this new type of material, it's the um, green bar at the end when you remove the gas, and you have this circle uh, on, in the middle of the graph at very around 200 uh, kilo per square meter. Here you, you, you will meet the uh, nanostructure material, which, are, uh, uh, which I, I'm going to describe more uh, in detail. Okay, so um, we generally we use a very simplified equation uh, to describe the thermal conductivity, the equivalent, we call that the equivalent thermal conductivity of material, and there are three main mechanisms. Uh, you have the gas uh, conductivity, which is very important, as the porosity is very high in insulating material, around 95 and even more per percent. You have the radiation and you have the solid part, but the solid part, as the porosity is high, the solid part does not represent uh, uh, an important uh, volume in, in the structure. And you can see in the graph, you have the dark blue line, which is the uh, solid part, so it's a very low contribution. You have the radiation, the pink um, curve, and you can see for very low density, the radiation increase, as I explained earlier, due to the uh, lack of uh, structure or, or, or of uh, opacifier. So you don't have enough barrier to stop the radiation. And you see the uh, light blue line, it's the thermal conductivity of gas, in this case the air. And you can notice that it will represent the main part as the porosity is very high. So. Uh, you have several strategies to reduce the thermal conductivity. Uh, first, as the gas condition is very important, sometimes it's between 60 to up to 80 percent. Uh, on the left, you have some equation, but I will not discuss too much this equation. But uh, you can see for uh, the thermal conductivity of a gas in a porous media, this thermal conductivity will depend on the thermal conductivity of a gas. And uh, there are two uh, structural parameters which are very important. It's the size of the pore and the pressure. Uh, it's delta and P. And uh, first, you have two free options for the gas conduction. Either you change the gas and we use some heavy gas, 
like uh, CFC, as it was used uh, a long time ago in polyurethane, but now it is banned. Uh, or, or the second option is to reduce the pressure. So you remove the gas from the material, so you don't have uh, any uh, energy carrier to, uh, to, to transport the energy. Or you uh, confine the gas in very small cavity to reduce the mobility of the gas and to reduce the interaction uh, between molecules. Uh, you can also reduce the conductivity by reducing uh, the, um, the radiation through the structure. And uh, in this case, for porous material, as the, uh, the density uh, is low, uh, you have uh, only one option. It's to uh, reduce what is called, it inc it's to increase uh, what we call the extension coefficient by adding either film uh, or powder of some opacifier. Okay, for example, uh, in a, uh, a fume silica uh, porous material, if you add uh, some uh, carbon black, you can notice that the specific in extension coefficient will increase due to this uh, carbon black, which will act as a barrier to radiation. It's a work uh, done at uh, ZIA Bayern in Germany. Uh, for the gas, uh, as I told you earlier, you have uh, several options. So normally use uh, the cheap one, which is air. Uh, but you have a, a set of uh, gas that you can use. Uh, CFC was used a long time ago in Polyurethane. Uh, and for example, in glazing, in double glazing, you use argon, uh, and you can notice that the thermal conductivity is lower uh, if the molecular weight uh, is higher. So the mobility of the gas is uh, is decreasing, and so uh, the conductivity is lower. Uh, for the gas conduction, uh, due to the, this uh, couple, the product from the uh, pore size, uh, the pore size uh, cavity uh, and the pressure. So you have two options. Either you uh, reduce the pressure or either you reduce the size or you do both at the same time. Okay, reducing the pressure, it's uh, like to remove uh, the gas molecule so you don't have uh, any uh, energy carrier in your porous media. And reducing uh, the size, it's to like to uh, avoid any uh, large movement of a molecule and avoid any uh, exchange between molecules. So it's like uh, on the animation on your uh, right. Otherwise, for example, in uh, polystyrene right now, poly uh, traditional cellular material, the, the molecules are very uh, high mobility and so they can uh, move and exchange energy uh, each other. Okay, so finally, you have using this equation, you can uh, reach this uh, well-known uh, curve. So it's the thermal conductivity versus the gas pressure, depending on the cavity size. And you can see, for example, uh, if you have a very large cavity, you need a, a very low pressure to have a very low thermal conductivity. If you reduce the size of the pore, you do not need a so low pressure. And for example, it is important for the service life. For example, uh, if you use a fume silica or an aerogel, you can see that if you have a, a, a pressure uh, below a, a 0.01 uh, millibar, you have uh, uh, three or four decades of increasing pressure without increasing thermal conductivity as the size is, is very small. So it's something like a, a guarantee uh, of the durability. So here it's the curve only for the gas. Uh, of course, uh, as you have a material, you have a, a solid part. Uh, it's the thermal conductivity which appear on the left. You have a, a thermal conductivity uh, of a, around two, uh, three, five, uh, milliwatt uh, due to the solid part like presented in, in, in the image on the right. And depending on, on the material you use, you have a, a different sh shape. And for example, the glass fiber can reach a very low, low value. 
So the solid part is can be described uh, like that. You know, you have very fine particle in, in, in nanopulse mat material. So the size of a particle is around 10 nanometer maybe. And so you have a lot of contact. And when you increase the density, you increase this number of contact and you have a, a power law relationship between the thermal conductivity and the, and the, and the density. Uh, one thing is very important for nanopulse material as you decrease the size of, of the pore, you increase the specific area. It means that we will have uh, a very large specific area, so uh, potentially uh, uh, an important interaction with gas uh, around, especially water vapor. So finally, uh, you have uh, right now on the market three types of uh, uh, super insulating material using one of the three options. Uh, uh, the, the nanoporous material like aerogel using uh, the decreasing of the cavity size, the vacuum panel using uh, uh, the decreasing of the pressure, but you have also some gas field panel which are not uh, very largely uh, uh, used. Uh, it's like a cellular structure uh, and you, you use uh, another gas than air. It can be considered like uh, double glazing, for example. <laughs> but with, uh, with argon or some other gas. And so for, you have this, on this, in, in, in this slide, uh, a whole range of uh, available uh, thermal insulating material. Okay, so there are some uh, critical issues. Uh, for vacuum insulation panel, there is an important point. It's the barrier film uh, to keep uh, vacuum inside. And there are two important points. It's the, when you have this, the, the, this film, you have, can uh, introduce some thermal bridge at, at the edge of, of the panel. And you have a question of the gas permeation of the film, which will determine the durability of the product. For nanostructure material, you have this question of high specific area and nanopore. And so you can have a strong interaction with uh, gas, especially water vapor. Here you have the film, which are used uh, mostly uh, for VIP. You have the laminated foil, which, is, uh, which has a very low permeation, but which will introduce uh, uh, a thermal bridge as the uh, aluminum layer is thicker. Or you have the metallized foil, uh, and the aluminum layer is thinner, uh, around uh, 10 to 100 nanometer. Uh, and so the thermal bridge is reduced, the thermal bridge at the edge, but the permeation maybe is uh, not so efficient than for the laminated foil. And so the, the, uh, the water absorption you, you I describe in, in this uh, uh, slide, you know you have absorption and capillary condensation, so you have an increasing of the thermal conductivity of the core material. And uh, the effect of the Water adsorbed at the surface, you see this blue uh, and part around the gray uh, particles. Uh, on the long term, uh, the water can modify the, the structure of a nanoporous uh, material due to the interaction of water and the, the nanoparticles. So it depends, of, for example, of the hydrophobic treatment of the, su of the surface. Uh, in spite of all this uh, question, you have on the market a few uh, products with some uh, technical uh, assessment. Uh, uh, for example, uh, QAP from EOTR for uh, aerogel uh, insulating material. In Germany, you have uh, Sulasung uh, given uh, by uh, DBT. And so you have uh, product on the market which are used for now for a decade with uh, some good results. Thank you.